there's nothing quite like irrational exuberance to bring prices to a new peak, only to have them come tumbling down when reality sets in. Today we're covering some of the common factors affecting gold and silver prices, how investors are processing new information, and what we can expect as we head further into 2024. Stay tuned. Before we begin, please like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you. The past few months we've seen a bit of volatility. Gold prices hit a new high of 21.35 per troy ounce on December 3rd, 2023, and we've had a wide trading range since then with gold dropping below 2000 an ounce in February. Similarly, silver has been on its own roller coaster, down tremendously from its highs over the past few years. One of the biggest factors that investors are pricing into multiple asset classes, including gold and silver, is the Fed's planned rate cuts. As some of you may remember, Christopher Waller, who sits on the Federal Reserve's Board of Governors, made some dovish comments on December 3rd, indicating that rate cuts were in the near future. Investors embraced that narrative and drove the gold market to fresh highs. Then Jerome Powell cooled markets a bit with more hawkish statements indicating rates staying higher for longer remains a possibility while on 60 minutes. All the factors influencing gold and silver can be a bit confusing, so we're going to break things down. The Federal Reserve sets the Fed funds rate, which is currently sitting at about 5.25 to 5.5%. When this rate goes down, debt becomes cheaper for everyone. That improves lending and spending, which fuels the economy, affects the prices of all kinds of assets like real estate, stocks, bonds, and metals. Now, gold is expected to improve due to its status as a safe haven asset. Maybe we talk a little about this in other videos. The Fed has such a big effect that Wall Street has a saying, don't fight the Fed. They've also got another saying, buy the rumor and sell the news. And those two terms explain a great deal of what is happening in the precious metals market. It's widely believed that rate cuts will improve the prices of precious metals, such as silver and gold. History has shown this to be the case. So we have investors eagerly piling into assets that will benefit from rate cuts. Here is where things get a little dicey and the term irrational exuberance needs an introduction. Irrational exuberance is a term made popular by Alan Greenspan in the 90s, referring to the tendency of investors to be overly optimistic for psychological reasons rather than any basis in market fundamentals. And we can see this very clearly in the metals market. As we write this script, the CME FedWatch tool is calling for an 8.5% chance the Fed will cut rates during the March 19 meeting. Jerome Powell already said that a March rate cut is off the table. There's a less than 1% chance that rate cuts will happen in March. Now, the market is pricing in five rate cuts in 2024. We're not sure why. The Fed's public statements clearly call for three rate cuts. If you look at their dot plot they released in December 2023, there were 19 members who provided a target range for 2024. Only five of 19 called for five rate cuts or more. Six of 19 called for four rate cuts. The remaining eight of 19 want three rate cuts or less. This is an example of irrational exuberance. A best case interpretation of the Federal Reserve stance would be 11 of 19 members want at least four rate cuts in 2024, which would be great. But the market has been pricing in five rate cuts and there's no fundamental reason that would be true. The base case for any rate cuts is that we achieve price stability, and there are a few factors that the Fed looks at when determining when they are going to cut rates or not. And it's those factors that are also influencing traders who want to profit from the impending rate cuts. So CPI is one of those factors. On February 13th, the CPI report was released and inflation came in higher than projected. Remember, this could influence how often the Fed cuts this year and when they cut. So when CPI came in 0.2 to 0.3% higher than projected, silver price dropped almost 3%, gold dropped over a percent, platinum and palladium declined as well. In fact, pretty much every market had a bad day because everyone generally benefits when rates are lower. The Dow, S&P 500, bond ETFs, it was a good buying opportunity on February 13. So here's a few things that traders are looking at that affect the prices of gold and silver 
and other assets. And remember, it's all because of the expected impact on the Fed funds rate. Anything that happens that might delay a rate cut is right now causing drops in asset prices. And anything that supports a rate cut will support investments like gold. A few big things to look out for include the CPI report that comes out once a month, GDP estimates, and the monthly jobs reports. In the spirit of bad news is good news, if GDP is negative or the job report indicates the labor market is starting to struggle, investors take that as a good sign the Fed will ease conditions sooner. The CPI report is a bit more straightforward. If inflation is trending down, that's going to be good. But if we miss projections, then the expectation that inflation is higher for longer will be followed by the expectation that rates will also remain higher for longer. The Bureau of Labor and Statistics, or BLS for short, produces the CPI and jobs reports that can occasionally affect markets. The Bureau of Economic Analysis, also called the BEA, produces the GDP estimates, and the Federal Reserve makes their meeting notes public. All this is easy to find, but a few key dates in March would be the jobs report on March 8th, a CPI report on March 12th, the Federal Reserve meeting on March 19th and 20th, and the GDP estimates will be released on March 28th and 29th. The Fed's March meeting will include a summary of economic projections, and this will indicate to us whether they are growing more hawkish or dovish in their projections by simply examining the dot plot. This example on the screen is from December of 2023. You can see how the 2023 consensus is very consolidated as it was at the end of the year and everyone agreed they were not changing things. Notice how the further out you go, the more spread out monetary policy projections become. 2024 is much more consolidated than 2025, for example. If this dot plot changes in March, it'll tell us whether the Fed is coming to more of a consensus on rate cuts or not and it will tell us by how much. If the number of members who want to see five rate cuts this year increases from five to anything greater, we would be unsurprised to see prices of gold and silver rise. And if that number decreases, then we may see gold and silver react accordingly. Usually there's three to four meetings or reports that occur each month throughout the year that may have an impact on market activity. As the meetings and reports occur and the picture for 2024 becomes clearer, the market starts to wake up to reality and expectations tend to right set. Right now, if nothing were to change, we would expect to see investors eventually realize that five rate cuts is probably not happening and for downward pressure to occur right up until rate cuts come within sight. Now, probably the strangest phenomenon is the tendency to buy the rumor and sell the news. While rate cuts are expected to improve metal prices, it would be in keeping with tradition to see the rumor of rate cuts improve prices, and when rate cuts finally occur, a sell-off that lowers prices temporarily would not be unusual. If it seems like a mad world, don't worry, you're not alone. The way I've rationalized the irrational here is by thinking of it as buying expectations. When someone says the market is forward-looking, what they mean is that someone is buying in anticipation of a certain result, and when that result is achieved, there's often an immediate sell-off. It makes some sense, even if it does seem a bit counterintuitive. You just have to remember that some market participants are playing short-term games and buying and selling on small spreads, and that's moving some markets up or down in the short term. Now, in the long game, played by most of us, these bouts of volatility mean very little. So how can you use this information? First, I think it provides a peace of mind, knowing why things are moving up or down. Not panicking over a short-term change in the price of metal is an advantage, as some people may be tempted to liquidate at the wrong time and lock in a loss. The other advantage is that if you know what market expectations are and you're aware of an imbalance, you can prepare for buying opportunities. So look at it this way. Federal Reserve is done raising rates. They've said they're not raising rates anymore. They're in a holding pattern. None of the members are currently planning to raise them or advocating for it. So long term, that's going to be beneficial for metal buyers. But we also know the market is overly optimistic right now, which means we may see short term weakness. Now, believers in metals prospects in a rate cut environment are going to view this as a buying opportunity. This is supported by broader market data, but also even in our sales data, we tend to see an increase in buyers whenever the prices drop 
due to something like the February 13 CPI report. And with clear heads, we know that May 1 is probably the earliest we can expect to see rate cuts, which should help inform you as well. Whatever strategy you want to adopt with this information, we hope this leaves you more informed regarding the price movements of precious metals. That's all we have for you today. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.